How does Peter choose a dress for Evita? What happens when the funny guy gets angry? Who is the man under the makeup? My guest on Under the Skin is Peter Dirk Ace. Peter Dirk Ace, welcome to Under the Skin. Thank you. How long does it take you at the end of a show to shed your Evita Bezadenhout skin, to take off the makeup, deal with the wig, get rid of the clothes, and perhaps most important, while you're doing that, what goes through your head? The first thing that leaves me is the high heel shoes, where the moment okay. I leave the stage, <laughs> I can walk off yes. as Evita, and the moment I get off stage, I'm crippled, I can't move, yes. because then I'm back. Mm. And I've got to kick the shoes off. Once the shoes are off, the eyelashes come off. It's like literally with baby oil, Johnson's baby oil, my face is clear before the audience has even left the theater. Uh, and I leave Evita in the air of where she was. I don't have any echo of her at all, at all. And does it make it easier that when you step into the lobby, perhaps you're meeting people for a drink or strangers want to chat, that you don't have to be Evita, you can absolutely be yourself well I never I can't when I haven't yes. got her there I mean it's, it's I, I, I love talking about in the third person yes because that was my my instinctive survival of the character right back in 1980 81 82 I have to make her so real that the women recognize the woman and the men forget the man and once she's not here she's gone so I don't even when people say to me can you do Evita for the radio I say eh, I mean, it sounds stupid the voice yeah. no so I respect the character and I leave her alone because I hope she leaves me alone. She doesn't like me that, that much. I mean, I can't ever advertise my work through Evita. Yes. It doesn't work. She calls me a third-rate comedian with good legs. Why, why did you create this character? And has that need shifted as you and the country have changed? When, when in 1978, I realized that I had... I had no work. The market theatre was my only work I had. And there right. was, there was a, a, a fear of my plays being banned as they were. The theatre would close down. It was quite a challenge. Um, somebody offered me a column in the Sunday Express. Quiz for uh, fears, eh? Quiz for fears. Yes. A hundred words uh, a week and one rand a word. That didn't change, did it? One rand a word. Um, and so I created this Afrikaans Tani who once a month in the column would say, Scotty, have you heard? And all the scandal of the information scandal, all the thing about Eshel Rudi and all the stuff that was happening there, the pre-Gupta corruptions of South Africa through the uh, Bruderbund, um, she would come out with all those facts. And the editor actually said to me after a few months, how can you say these things through this woman and I can't put it on the front page of the newspaper, this Evita of Pretoria. So he gave her the, the name, which I then immediately found a book about Evita Peron, found it as a wonderful blueprint for my character. And in 1981, with Adapt or Die, she appeared on stage, with me in my dress and my high heels and the chrut uh, because it was also illegal for men to dress up as women. So I thought okay. I'd tick that box as well. Yes. And I just thought it would be fun for the three weeks of Adapt or Die, and it happened at the right time. Evita just grabbed the attention very specifically of the media, who really, truly enjoyed the idea of this Afrikaans doyen of the National Party, talking about P.W. Boerta and Elise Boerta as her best friends and seeing apartheid as a gift from God and allowing us to laugh at our fear. Um, and then, of course, the homelands happened, and that was the most wonderful way to find her job, to become the As indeed, they found jobs for many people. As they did. Yes. And so we even found the name Babeti Kosweti, and today the irony is that's the only homeland people seem to remember. And Pit Kurnov, you say, Babis Kutwati, Babis Kutwati. Yes. And so she was very much in demand during those years uh, of the National Party, uh, elbing her way into all the inner circles of the National um, Executive, um, getting fan mail from Puk at two o'clock in the morning, an eight page fax, maybe yes. by Ambassador Risa. Um, literally a fax arriving at literally two in the morning. Literally a fax. Um, How is uh, the spelling? Well, uh, this, this once happened, actually, Evita, yes. I was in London, and Evita was with me in London doing a show, and they wanted her to be on a SABC panel with Piet Kuernhoff and Puk mm -hmm. And there was Evita sitting in London. I couldn't see them, but I could hear them. Um, I was even dressed, yes. just in case I thought there might be a, there wasn't a selfie at the time, but there might be a, and the first question from, from the, 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 the guy who was running it said, uh, 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 do you still have a lot of contact with, with Minister Puk Boerta? Can you from a prat jylle met mekaar? Sê, weet dat nie, maar hy faks my elke aand. Okay. 
And that brought the house down. Okay. And then Cook spoiled it by trying to explain, no, what she means instead of <laughs> use the facts. Oh, that was great. Yes. And of course, then Nelson Mandela uh, released her from her, her, I suppose, her the closet of, of nationalism. And I did a lot of work through Evita for Madibov at these wonderful moments that he was trying to focus attention on, on HIV and AIDS. And Evita had a 15 minutes of fame. Always, oh, Petra, bring Evita. Where is Evita? Uh, and I remember one time I was with him standing. He was holding her hand like yes. Ronald Reagan was holding Evi uh, uh, Nancy's hand. And I said to him, I said, President Mandela, every time you see me, I'm just as Evita Bazzano. Oh, don't worry, Peter, I know you're inside. And you were inside. But since you mentioned HIV AIDS, that was a moment at which you stepped away from what seemed to work for you, that you would deal with shame and revulsion and fear through humor. Mm. But with HIV AIDS, you chose to do something else. Why? I was terrified of HIV. I mm -hmm. was so scared of getting AIDS because my lifestyle was an open door as a gay man. Um, in the 80s, a closeted gay man, but certainly in the 90s, I had the freedom to come out of my closet and just get on with my life. Uh, my, my gayness became a, 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 a job description. Yes. You know, I love Sophia Loren, I'm overweight and I'm gay, so let's move from there. And then when through the Tabo and Becky inner circle came this decision to uh, announce that maybe HIV did not lead to AIDS. I think it was more complicated and much more specific, like yes. HIV didn't lead to AIDS. I just thought, this is, this, no, this is not right. Well, how do I fight this thing? Um, and I, I did cross the line. Uh, I, I wrote, I think it was the first time I pressed send when pissed off. <laughs> yes, pissed off? Pissed off, not pissed, but pissed okay. off. Um, and I, my, my point was, you know, to, to anybody who could do something about this, we cannot allow this to happen. This man, Tom and Becky, is the wrong man. Find a president who can actually help the issue. And there was a big uproar, um, a huge amount of, of attention. And pushback and pushback insults. Pushback and, and anger. And I was very depressed and angry and angry with myself for having to use the word genocide. Yes. Um, which I believe it is. Uh, and in fact, Evita came to my, to my rescue. I was back in London doing a season and this thing kept on following me. They kept on wanting answers. The ANC said, you've got to apologize, you've got to do this. And she wrote a letter which she, I sent to the newspapers and the editors, the, the right editors put it on the front page where Evita wrote this letter to Tabo Mbeki saying, Mr Mbeki, really, we admire you and you're doing a very good job. And, you know, you know don't attack Peter Doug Ace for these things because then you sound like Peter Buerta. Move on. And that stopped the argument. It stopped the argument, but I'm fascinated by the fact that there was a moment where you said, actually, I'm going to stand up dressed as I am, no disguise, yes. let nobody be confused about who is saying this and what I'm saying. Yes, you say that there were moments when Evita Bezaidnot came out for specific occasions, but you fought this fight very much as Peter Durka is. I did. Why? Well, I was terrified of this second... Apartheid. Yes. The second virus, the first virus was apartheid itself. Uh, and I thought I must confront my fear with my work. Yes. And so I started going to schools with an hour's entertainment called For Facts Sake. Yes. Which was great to see a principal say that carefully, For Facts Sake. Yes. And, um, great enunciation. And, you know, <laughs> it, was the, it was a changing point in my life yes. on, in every way. Um, I went to, it was, took two, three, from 2002 2003, 2004, 2005, um, just telling the kids that they will die if they don't take care, if they don't understand where the minefield is. And I used words in school halls that had never been heard before. I would say to the kids. Or since. When I, or since. I said, you know, when I was your age, the only thing I knew about sex was the birds and the bees. How does a bird a bee? Mm. Well, you could imagine the kids just exploded. They listened to every word I said after that. The teachers went white. I mean, the black teachers went white. And I said to them, this is not an ex exposure of free speech. I'm just telling you that's where the minefield is. Yes. That is where there is a virus with no cure. And of course, eventually, cures started emerging. Um, and I still do it to this day. But HIV is part of more of a package. The other part of it is respect and democracy and your 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 answering questions and confronting the future. Just a last thing on Evita. You, I understand that you make all the clothes. Is that because it's hard for you to go into an outfit as a shop, a boutique, and say to the shop assistant, 
the yellow or the green or does my bum look big in this? Or do you make them because it's part of that relationship? I love that. Is your bum big in this? I must try that. Okay. I have three sections of clothes for Evita. Thin, medium, and fat. Okay. I hope she can still get into the and medium. And you make all of them? No, I don't make them. I'm not okay. good at that. Okay. I mean, I can sew a button on yes, and, and yes. all that. And I'm very good with, with Velcro and with safety pins. Uh, I've had some great couture's who have looked okay. after Evita, starting with Chris Levine, yes. who in the in the late 70s and 80s really, truly gave her a style and of and glamour. And Miss South Africa gowns, so and, you and were yes, right up there. And real yes. Buddha Baroque of, yes. uh, of the highest quality. Yes, yes. Uh, uh, Errol Orens also uh, helps tremendously with the new Winnie Mandela finery. Uh, but I go to the second-hand shops. I go to the SPCA shops. I look around. I just have this... I see something and I think maybe, maybe, maybe it's wrong because I can't even get it around my knees yes, because it's yes. for a waist like this. You don't go but into the fitting I room though. I do, I do go into shops that I know. Yes, okay. I don't surprise somebody. Okay. But when I go into a shop, <laughs> I have a picture of Evita. If they hadn't said, oh, how's Evita? Uh, have you gone okay. for and, and then I say, and who's, they say, is that your mother? Is that your wife? I said, no, that's me. Oh, they love it. Especially yeah. when they are beautiful black women who are very beautifully dressed. They say, darling, darling, come. I show you. And then they give me the privacy. There's a great respect for what I want to do there. So it's always, but I love the thing is my bum is too big in this. I'll use that. <laughs> <laughs>